Class is in <laughs> session at Yahoo U. Uh, that's a famous co quote by uh, Brian Chung there. And I want to begin the presentation with another famous quote. And this is from Supreme Court of the United States, Justice Potter Stewart, way back in 1964. I know it when I see it. And of course, he wasn't talking about financial markets, but we all know it when we see it. And that is a short squeeze, also known as a bubble. Here's Volkswagen. This is a max chart going back to the mid 90s. Guess what? Can you point this out? Can you see it right here? Of course you can. That was a short squeeze that made Volkswagen very briefly, if only for minutes, the most valuable public company in the U.S., topping $1 trillion in market cap. And that was one month after Lehman Brothers failed. That was in the heat of the moment there in the financial crisis. Everything else was going down. Volkswagen was going up in a short squeeze. So exactly how does this work? What are the mechanics of it? Well, it starts with supply versus demand. You have a fixed supply of stocks and you also have demand for it. Now, the supply of stocks is governed by the shares outstanding that are issued by a company. And what traders pay attention to, what's really the more important metric is the float. Different measures of estimating this, but for instance, in GameStop, they have shares outstanding of 70 million. The float is estimated to be 50 million, but in reality, it can get quite a bit lower, especially as traders enter it and stock doesn't become available or less stock becomes available for trading. So bottom line, you have fixed or decreasing supply plus increase in demand for the stock that equals higher prices. And we've seen this play out with GameStop in stride in something this week. Now, how do you invest or how do you short a stock? First, you have to locate the stock in order to borrow it. Your broker is going to help you do this and they are gonna charge you a fee. Now, sometimes a stock cannot be located uh, or the fees are so high that nobody wants to pay. This sets up the condition for a short squeeze, these fees and the high uh, percentage interest in the stock. Eventually, one side is gonna win out. It's gonna be the long or the short. Somebody's gonna run out of firepower. I think we know who it is this week so far with respect to gain stock. We have a couple of potential outcomes here. Either the short sellers win, and we've seen this happen, time and time again. Tilray is a very good example in 2018. Uh, Bitcoin is also another example of 2017. And I choose Bitcoin as an example. It's kind of interesting case here. Now, remember that run we had into December of 2017? That was the peak. Well, the CME issued futures, the first big liquid futures contract on Bitcoin. So short sellers had the ability to short it. And they indeed did that. They indeed did do that, excuse me, all the way down. Now, that's only one of the many reasons for the decline in Bitcoin at the time. But I said, kind of an interesting case study right there. So what's happening in this case? Well, how is GME different? This week is very instructive because we have a number of phenomenon that has propelled GameStop to uh, record levels here. The first is call options. So people are not only buying uh, the Wall Street bettors are not only buying the actual stock, but they're buying it through call options. They have embedded leverage. In the old days, five or 10 years ago, to do this, you needed a margin account, which required $50,000 minimum. Nowadays, you can do it for $1,000, a few thousand dollars. And many of these new accounts that Robinhood uh, is signing up right now come with that as the default. So there's margin and, uh, and leverage built into the system now. We also have this week, we've learned from Robinhood over the last 24 hours that they had to tap a credit line. And that's because their capital position was uh, in danger because all the gains that would be made in, that were made in the brokerage accounts from these Wall Street bettors had to become a liability of the company. This gets to T plus two settlement. And I'm not gonna go too much in the weeds here. We've heard this phrase over the last 24, 48 hours bandied about, but essentially, if you buy a stock and you make $50 on it, uh, at the end of the day, your brokerage account statement is going to say you made $50. Uh, but you don't actually have that stock yet because your broker doesn't have the stock. They owe it to you. And so if the stock price goes up too much and the broker doesn't have the stock, they can, in fact, get a margin call themselves. And this is what we saw with respect to Robinhood. Uh, and they, were, they had to tap Citadel for that. Citadel essentially said, you're going to have to post more money on all these trades Otherwise, uh, we're going to have to start liquidating, and that would present a very uncomfortable situation. Bottom line is dealers have to hedge too. So all of this is kind of a perfect storm, uh, creating a unique learning situation for everybody, including me. I'm learning things along the way too as well. Uh, but in this perfect storm, what's the net result? 
we have a situation where we get something that looks like this. And let's go back to the Wi-Fi Interactive here so we can see the weekly gains and a few losses here in some of the big names. And just some real standouts here. We have costs up 2,700% in the upper left, followed by Blockbuster up 1,700%, GameStop 416%. What a run here. And it is instructive that today is Friday and we have weekly options expiration. And as many as 5 million shares may have to be assigned to call option buyers by the end of the day. And if that happens, we could run into another situation on Monday after that settlement where we get a potential fail to deliver on a number of those contracts, creating more demand for the stock, which continues the run up into next week. Or something completely different could happen because guess what? This, is, this market is one that is suffering from butterfly effects. We're seeing market irregularities getting priced out. But I hope we all learned something today. Bottom line, uh, it's been an incredible run and learning experience for all of us here.